Here we have Vivian Gaff, who is lecturer in equine nutrition in the Veterinary College of Dublin, and he is also one of the duty veterinary surgeons in the RDS. And we thought we might talk a little bit about some common errors that people make or advice people give them about feeding their horses. Yeah, thanks Hugh. Uh, one thing I've always tell the students is that when they buy a horse they don't get an instruction manual with it. And uh, you know, I think what you've got to look back at is the evolution of the horse. And a horse evolved different from a cow or a sheep. It's got upper incisors, so it's evolved for a high fibre diet. And it's normal for horses to eat things like bark of trees, it's not, uh, you know, that's part of their diet. They have rapidly growing teeth, where the modern horse were inclined to feed them uh, a lot of concentrate feed, which they wouldn't have evolved on. Uh, but you can't feed concentrate without fibre, and lack of fibre or low fibre diet would be one of the common mistakes. It's actually a common mistake in human nutrition as well, we probably don't eat enough fibre, but definitely horses. And we see the consequences of that. Uh, quite a lot. It leads to maybe dental problems where their teeth aren't being ground down enough. Uh, gastric ulceration where they're not getting enough good fill and their, their stomach is, is exposed to acid for a lot of the time. Uh, we see things like colic where gut motility is wrong as well. And horses often don't do well. And one of the reasons why oats, preferably than barley or corn, is so popular because oats is a high fibre cereal and it suits horses. It suits, again, it's good for humans as well if you want to improve your diet. Uh, so that's why oats has traditionally been good, even though it's a low energy food compared, say, with corn or barley. Horses feel good on it and are therefore fresh. And fresh is a feel good factor. I think a fresh horse is a, a sign of health. It's a, it's a healthy horse. Uh, I guess other mistakes then, it's very hard to generalise, I think you've got to see the animal, horses are individuals, there's such a range of different horses, when you talk about a horse you don't know whether it's a Connemara pony to a, an athletic race horse to a, a, a you know, large working farm horse or whatever, so it's very very hard to generalise and I think the key to success in feeding horses is to treat them as individuals and from speaking to successful racehorse trainers and show jumpers is the reason why, you know, when, when I talk to them and talk about their nutrition, every horse is fed as an individual. It's not like feeding a, a, a dairy herd or a flock of sheep or whatever. You look at the horse, you analyse the horse. Some horses are what we call easy doers. They will, you know, put on weight very easily and maybe prone to laminitis are allowed to get too fat. Other horses don't do so well and you need to tailor their nutrition towards their needs. So, I mean, I think one, one, one thing that obviously the freshness and the quality of the fibre and the hay is very important. Yeah. And, and, and you know that that so people maybe if they don't concentrate on the quality of the hay, they just a little bit, you know, yeah. poor quality. Um that it can certainly lead to lung lung problems, yeah. lung allergies. Yeah. When people talk about quality of, of hay, one interpretation might be the nutritional quality. Yeah. May, maybe the amount of protein, the amount of uh, vitamins, the amount of uh, energy in it. But really what's important for the horse is the preservation quality is the spores and the dust because horses are very very sensitive respiratory systems and if someone tells me they've got the, a the hay analyzed and it's got 18 percent protein and it's very high in calcium and vitamin a and things like that if it's if it's moldy and if it's dusty it's, it's not suitable for horses so the best way to judge hay is actually sniff it and 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 smell it and shake it and see if there's dust in it and second to that then you can look at the nutritional quality but definitely it's, it's, the, it's the preservation and it's very very difficult to preserve hay well because you need five good days and and you know not all hay will get that so consequently uh, you know a lot of horses are suffering from allergies and, and respiratory problems from poor quality hay so I mean if somebody's in a situation where they can't one year get good quality hay I mean should they feed horse age or maybe look at even leaving the horse out in the paddock more? Or? Yeah, well I mean leaving the horse out in the paddock would be great anyway, but sometimes the land and, and the ground isn't, isn't conducive to that. Horse age is good, definitely good. Uh, if it's not punctured and there's, and there's no moles grown on it because you can't get high mycotoxins the mold get in into an anaerobic environment. But horse age, if they can afford it, is definitely a good alternative. And have you any suggestions about people that will be in to use big bale silage or the dangers associated with that? The big bale silage or the, even the pit silage, horses, it, it's not poisonous to horses, it's high acid, a lot of the sugars in the grasses are converted to acid, therefore it's not as sweet. Horses have a sweet tooth, so therefore they will eat it but maybe not thrive on it. Yeah. So if you have a growing animal and you're trying to give it plenty of food, it may not grow that well. However, if you have an old store animal or a barren mare and she's a, an easy doer, 
uh, she will eat the silage. Uh, she'll, she'll hold her own, she won't starve to death, yeah. she probably won't get obesity. They don't particularly like it, they do acclimatise to it, they'll refuse it for a while until they get very hungry and then they will eat it. So there's nothing wrong with, with, with feeding silage to horses, but it's not suitable for every horse. Sure. And so when you're feeding horses, you've got to decide at what energy that your horse needs. So for example, a mare in the last three months of pregnancy, yeah. or when she's lactating, yes. has a very high energy requirement. Yes. And therefore she will be an animal that will need extra concentrate just to get the energy. Yeah. Um, the same way as a racehorse that is in full work, you know, yeah. is going to need a lot of energy. I mean, um, horses were, are, you know, they were designed to withstand winters and the normal weight of a horse yo-yos a little bit anyway. In the autumn, horses should be in good condition because that's nature's way of preserving energy over the, over the winter when, when the forage is of very poor quality and may be covered with six inches of snow. So horses are designed to put on weight during the summer into the autumn. Then outside, it keeps them warm, they burn it off and by springtime they're back into skin condition and the spring grass recovers them. So the normal life cycle or annual cycle of a horse's weight does go up and down. But in the domestic situation, you know, we, we, we have to be, you know, people don't winter them out as much, they cover them with two or three rugs, they keep them in, they're feeding them concentrates. So obesity can be a problem, especially in maybe the costs and things like that. And, uh, you know, you, you, do, you do see some of that. And it's very, very difficult, it's like the Labradors or even ourselves. It's easy to put on the weight, but it's very difficult to take it off. So prevention is the best thing. To body condition score your horse, if you see them getting fleshy, you have to be objective about it, you have to, to be honest about it. And even though it might sound a little bit cruel to cut back on their feed, because horses sometimes love their feed and it's a good way to interact and love your animal, is by giving it food. Uh, but you have, to be, you have to be firm and say, no, change the feed, you may not have to cut back, but you can change it onto a lower energy diet. And I suppose to be really careful of the spring grass, I mean, the first flush of grass in the spring, from yeah. points of view, from both from Lamanite, you look at that grass there, yeah. and it, it looks the same this morning as it does this evening. Uh, but if you actually analyse that grass, it's five o'clock this morning, it'll be very low sugar. Where after a day's sun and heat, where you have a lot of photosynthesis, the sugar levels in that maybe by five o'clock this evening could be five-fold difference. And that's a huge change in diet. Now it looks the exact same to us, but yeah. the nutritional value is so different. Yeah. So some people have a horse out in, in, a, in, a, in a paddock in, in, the, in the springtime and it's fine, and then we get a warm sunny day, and the grass suddenly changes and it's got laminitis. And they can't understand, they say there wasn't a change of feed, but there was a big change of feed. Yes, you know, they, didn't it. they didn't realize it, you know, so that is an, another problem, is if people don't realize kind of the way grass can be so variable. Yeah. 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 Yeah.